What is up, everybody, and welcome to Jeffrey Time. Today, well, it looks like we got a couple things to talk about, don't we? Uh, congratulations to Ezekiel Elliott on securing the bag, as they say. Uh, congratulations to Jared Goff for also securing said bag. And what does that mean for Dak Prescott? So let's jump right in with Zeke. Here's what I want to do on the Zeke thing. You guys know how I feel, right? It's a sad day for me. I got four highly paid offensive linemen and a second round pick offensive lineman. I don't think I need to spend $15 million a year on a running back. But to the great Kevin Turner's point, 8% of the cap to a great running back, you can survive it. I think Bill Barnwell said it best. So when somebody's already said it best, I believe in just saying what they say. Um, so Bill Barnwell, when it comes to the Zeke deal, you would think that if I was going to do a video, I'd actually have it pulled up and prepared to do it. But that's not how I roll. Here we go. He says, the following can all be true. Zeke is better than an average running back. True. The difference between Zeke and an average running back behind the Dallas line isn't worth the difference in salary. True. Zeke will probably be productive enough for the Cowboys to be happy with this extension. True. <laughs> like, it's okay. We don't have to hot take it. Zeke got paid, and that's fine. Uh, I don't believe that you needed to pay a running back that much to get the production, but Zeke took his opportunity when he had his leverage, which was right now, when they weren't really comfortable with what they had behind him in going into a season, and he got his deal done, and he got his guaranteed money. So good for Zeke. Uh, not ideal in terms of building a roster, not ideal in terms of salary cap management, but you got a great running back. They rewarded him, and he will play that extension out, and it'll be like 8% of the salary cap, something like that, and you can survive that. I mean, teams survive having 5 to 7% of the cap is dead money. So you can survive having a great player taking 8% of your cap. Not ideal. I wouldn't have wanted to do it, but that's also why Zeke held out when he did because he knew that this was his one time to do this. If you gave him another season to prepare, then they would have felt a lot better about running out whatever at running back because I do not believe that you can run out whatever at running back. If you promised me Tony Pollard wouldn't get hurt and he could carry it 20 times, I'd say roll with it. But... Uh, that's just not something that you know about him at this point. So whatever. Zeke gets his deal done. Zeke gets paid. And now we can talk about the Cowboys going to try to win the Super Bowl. That's why the timing of the holdout was perfect. This is the best Cowboys roster since the last time they won a Super Bowl. They're going to have a really good defense, a really good offensive line. They are above adequate at receiver. They are very good at running back. And at quarterback, we'll see. And that is where we go to next. Quarterback. So... Jared Goff gets his deal, according to the numbers I saw, four years, $134 million. That works out to $33.5 million per year. Carson Wentz got $32 million per year. So I think you have the numbers for the DAC deal. If Dak's agents are serious about getting a deal done, it's $32 million a year. That's the number. You can get what Carson Wentz got. Because, I, you know, I hear all of the arguments, and it's fine that Dak, you know, his agency, CAA, they're shooting for the moon, talking about huge numbers. That's fine. You're not better than Jared Goff. That's it. For, like, I don't need the numbers for your entire career. To me, let's burn the rookie year numbers. Goff was with Jeff Fisher on a bad team. Carson Wentz was the check down king of the world. I don't care what you were three years ago. The last two years, Jared Goff's the top five passer in the NFL, and Dak Prescott, you're number 17. You're the 17th best quarterback at throwing the ball in the league the last two years. Now, I give you some credit for the runs and the running touchdowns. So if you want to tell me that he's the 12th best quarterback in the league, cool. Goff's been in the top five the last two years, and he got 33 and a half. You don't get 33 and a half. The reason that you're talking about being in the 30s is because of market value, right? Well, if Russell Wilson's is 35 and Jared Goff's is 33 and a half, then realistically yours is 28 to 30. So I could see the DAC deal. Uh, just being played out this year. And then I could see the franchise tag being held there if the demands don't become more reasonable. And I say that without knowing the exact demands, but I think the Jared Goff deal lets you know uh, that as the team, you would look at that and you'd say, okay, that quarterback is a better quarterback than you are. So you will not get as much as him. Wilson is a better quarterback than you are. You will not get as much as him. Carson Wentz. I think is the better player, but when you throw in the durability concerns that you don't have with Dak, I could say, okay, I could see your case for saying I deserve Carson Wentz money. So if you want to get a reasonable Dak deal done, you're talking about $32 million a year. You're talking about a hundred million dollars guaranteed and poof, you go do it. But I don't even want to bicker about contracts for the moment because I've already done it. 
So I guess it doesn't matter if I want to or not because I just did it. But uh, what you focus on now is Zeke is here, Dak is here, Amari Cooper's here, everybody's here, everybody's locked in. Now, a year from now, and definitely two years from now, is when these guys who got their new contracts are going to have salary cap numbers that match the average annual. Like this year, Zeke's number won't be big. Jalen Smith's number is not big. Uh, Lyle Collins' number came down. It's next year where the numbers will start jumping and we'll have to start talking about, okay, how are they going to manage to have the depth around these guys that they've had before? What are they going to do contract-wise? Do they have to move money around to keep somebody? Like That's going to start a year from now and big time two years from now, which makes this the year. I think this year and next year, these are the years for the Cowboys. So you do whatever you got to do. This is going to be your window. This is the window where the guys you've extended still have low numbers. So you can do what you got to do. You can sign who you got to sign. And I think to uh, uh, some extent next year, you'll also be fine against the cap. So for the next two years, get ready because they've built the best roster they've ever had uh, since the Super Bowls. They've built the best roster. They've got the best depth. And these things can't last forever in a salary cap league. But this is it. It's this year. It's next year. And again, to my friend Kevin Turner's point, if you trust Will McClay, you can extend this window by being a great drafter, by finding undrafted talent, um, by just finding a bunch of low money guys to keep this thing going. But you are going to have a pinch, a salary cap pinch. So enjoy this year. Enjoy next year and go win the freaking Super Bowl. That's the message of today. Go win the Super Bowl. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Don't forget to check 1053thefan.com every day. And don't forget to listen to the G-Bag Nation. Love you guys, and I'll see you shortly.